G'day, this is Mr. Thompson. This is the third video showing you how to use Inventor to create your, or design your 3D dragster. We're up to the wheels. Um, we're going to 3D print our wheels. So uh, let's have a look at how to design a 3D printable wheel or set of wheels using Inventor. So uh, we're going to go File and New. And again, I'm not going to use these options here. I'm just going to go File New right here. And uh, Again, I'm going to use, I'm going to find the metric options and we're going to create a part and it'll be a standard part using millimeters as our dimensions. So double click on that. All right, we're going to start by drawing a circle. That's a good place to start if you're making a wheel. So I'm going to start a 2D sketch and I'm going to use my YZ plane. So click on that plane. Let's draw a circle. So click on circle, draw here, we're going to go click and come out. Um, now, what diameter? Um, if I have a look at the rules here about wheels, it tells me that the front diameter wheel, the, the diameter of the front wheel has to be between 32 and 37 millimeters. Now, what if I go 35? I don't know. I guess a, a big wheel, actually, you know what? Yeah, a, a big wheel has less rolling resistance, uh, but a small wheel is more aerodynamic. So what did I do there? Uh, never mind, I'll click OK there, and I'm just going to now dimension that. So dimension, click on that. OK, so at the moment that's 29. What did I say? Uh, between 32 and 37. Let's go 35. You choose whatever dimension you want, as long as it's within those rules. OK, uh, let's zoom all so I can see everything. Um, and now, um, well, let's finish the sketch. That's the, We're going to do it bit by bit. So that's the first step. OK, and now we need to extrude that. Uh, now, I don't want my wheel to be 10 millimeters wide. That's way too wide. Again, I'm looking at the wheel, at the rules, and it says the front width at surface contact point. In other words, the, the, the thickness of the rim has to be between 2 millimeters and 5 millimeters. Actually, I'm going to use 2 millimeters, and I think you should too as well, because that means the, the main part of the wheel, that main sort of disc part of the wheel is going to be two millimeters thick. And two millimeters is a pretty good distance to 3D print to make something you know reasonably strong enough that it's not going to just fall apart. So we'll do two millimeters there like that. OK, so now we've got a disc. That's not a wheel yet, but we'll get there. I'm going to start a 2D sketch again. And this, I'm going to click on this surface here um, and zoom all so I can see everything. Now, I'm going to do the rim next. So uh, I'm going to, the well, first thing I'm going to do is project geometry because this circle is not actually in my sketch. It's behind my sketch. And if I'm going to draw a rim, I need that geometry to actually be in the sketch. So I click on that like that. Now that yellow line on the outside tells me that that, uh, that circle is actually part of my sketch now. So escape. Um, so circle, I'm going to click on the circle. I'm going to draw a circle like that. OK, and you can see that's my rim between there and there. Now, I didn't worry about distance yet. I'm about to fix that. So click on dimension. I want the distance between that line and that line. So I clicked on them. I want that to be, well, I'm thinking that, let's make that two millimetres as well. So two millimetres, a two millimetre rim. OK, good. Um, let's finish that sketch and let's uh, extrude. So if I click extrude here, um, I want this extrusion here. Now, or it, if I click on the outside because it's the rim that I want to extrude, it's got two millimeters. I'm thinking for a wheel, for a, for a front wheel, I'm thinking one millimeter is probably enough. I want it nice and thin. So I'll just do like do that, like a one millimeter extrusion. Okay, uh, let's come. Oh, I haven't been labeling. Let's label. So if I click here and then click again, uh, disc. That's the disc of the wheel. Um, click, click here, click again. That's the rim of the wheel. All right, uh, let's start sketch again. So I'm going to do another 2D sketch. Now I'm going to do the hub of the wheel. So I'm going to click here. We're going to draw another circle. There we go. And the hub, now the diameter of the wheel, my axle is three millimeters. So I'm going to make the hub, I'm thinking about seven millimeters will probably be a good distance. So I've got a seven millimeter hub there. Um, so let's finish that sketch and extrude again. Um, and I want my hub 
you know what, I want my hub to be a bit longer than that because um, if it's too skinny, the wheel's going to wobble around on the axle and I don't want that. I want the wheel to stay straight on the axle. So I want a decent hub. What if I go five millimeters? That looks okay. All right. Okay. Um, you're probably thinking we need a hole. We need an axle hole. We do. Now we're ready to do that. So if I start 2D sketch, click on that surface there. Let's do an axle hole. Now, the, um, the axles are three millimeters diameter. So I want a little bit more than three millimeters. Uh, I'm thinking about 3.5. This is probably something we could experiment with to see whether I think 3.2 might be a little bit too thin because usually when you 3D print something, the holes end up a little bit smaller um, than you originally intend because the plastic sort of swells a little bit. Um, so um, I'm going to start with 3.5 and uh, maybe after a bit of testing, I might have to make that a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller. But um, let's start with 3.5. So finish that. Again, we want to extrude, um, extrude that surface. Uh, we want it to go back and we want it to be a cut. And that's good. And we want it to go all the way through. In fact, if I come around here and look at the back, I can see that that hole's gone all the way through. That's good. Click on Home again. Okay, so click OK there. And, oh, I didn't. I keep forgetting to name these. So that was the hub. So we'll call that, that's our hub. And that extrusion there, that's our axle hole. All right. So that's a wheel. Um, that could probably do actually, but you know what? We're gonna get a little bit fancier than that. That's a fairly heavy wheel. There's a lot of plastic in this disc. And I'm thinking if we cut some holes in this disc, um, then we can make the disc lighter. Now you could do all sorts of fancy stuff. You could make some spokes, but um, uh, this is a basic video. So I'll just start with the basics. We'll cut some holes. So start a 2D sketch on that disc and we're going to create some circles so let's put a circle there like that oh how big let's go nine nine mil that looks pretty good um, now it's purple it's not constrained yet so i'm going to constrain it i'm going to click on dimension and i'm going to say how far between there and there how far out's that at the moment it's 9.4 uh, let's just make it a round number 9.5 millimeters that looks pretty good. Let's leave it there. Now, I want to do that same thing all the way around. Um, so, but rather than draw it lots of times, I want them all to be exactly the same. So I'm going to use this circular pattern. So with the circular pattern, what we can do, if I click on that, yeah, I can, you can see the geometry arrow is selected. So I'm going to click on the geometry. In other words, what's the shape that I want to repeat in a pattern? I want to repeat that shape. So I clicked on that shape. Now, What's the center of the pattern? The center of the pattern, I'm gonna click on this one here, that's the center of the axis. So if I click here, then can you see that's put in six holes all the way around. So six, see how it's got six there? And for the whole 360 degree pattern. Um, you know what? I think there's not enough, I think there's too, not enough space between those holes. So I'm gonna change that six and make it five. And that looks better to me. So that looks like better spacing. So five, I could do four, or I could do three, or I could do seven. Actually, seven would be a bad idea because there'd be um, that would just be cutting the hub out of the middle of the wheel. We won't do that. So I think five, for me, five's good because that, see, that leaves a, a reasonable amount of space between those holes. Okay, there we go. Oh, now they're all purple. Why are they purple? I know why they're purple. They're purple, I'm gonna zoom in, because I didn't constrain the exact position of this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put in a vertical constraint, vertical constraint between the center of that hole there and the center of that hole there. There we go. And that constrained this one. And because these ones are repeats, it automatically constrained the other ones as well. So finish that sketch. Now I want that to be an extrusion. I want those to be holes. So extrude so i'm going to select that one that one that one that one and that one and i want them to go the other direction and i want them to be cuts and instead of sticking out the back there i could leave it like that but i'll just say go through everything and i can just have a look at the back there 
and see, yep, that's worked nicely. Well, go back to the home view. Okay, all right, click OK there, and there's our wheel. Now we're nearly finished, nearly finished. I'm going to change one or two more. Oh, you know what? Let's put these in here. Let's call them, I don't know, I'm going to call them spoke holes because they're sort of where the spokes would go. I don't know, you might think of a better name. That'll do. One more thing. I'm going to flip around to the back here. When we 3D print this, what often happens when you 3D print is you get a little thing called elephant's foot. So when we 3D print, I'll show you the 3D print, we're going to print it flat on the surface like, well, like that. So that'll, so that back of the uh, wheel will be on the, on the uh, deck or the platform um, of the 3D printer. And often what happens is you get a little bit of that first layer gets squashed and so it expands a little bit. And so if we've got that, that means we'll have a tiny little ridge around that edge there and we'll have a tiny little ridge around that edge there, which is not what we want. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a little chamfer. Um, so if I click up here on chamfer and I'm going to put a little chamfer there and a little, oh, that's done, that's done a big chamfer. I don't want big chamfers. I'm going to make it the chamfer maybe just a small one, 0 0.4 millimeters, 0. Point, 0. Point, uh, yeah, you know, I'll go 0 0.4. And that's because when we do 3D print, each layer is about 0.2 millimeters. So uh, that just gives me a couple of layers of chamfer. So if I click, click OK there now, you can just see that that's just cut the corner off that bottom edge and the cut the corner off that bottom edge, which means when we 3D print this, it won't sort of bulge out the bottom there and bulge out the bottom there. So look, there are other ways you can solve that problem, but I find that's a pretty handy way of doing it. So there's my front wheel. So let's save that. I should actually, I should have saved this a long time ago. So I click on save and I'm going to call that front wheel. Front wheel, save. Okay, now my back wheel, I'm not going to start again. I'm going to use my front wheel and just make some changes. So I'm going to go File, Save As. And I'm going to now save it as the back wheel. Back wheel, save. All right. Um, and let's have a look at the rules for the back wheel. So the back wheels, I'm just looking looking through the wheels, the back wheels need to be between 30 and 40 millimeters. What if I have a 30 millimeter diameter back wheel? Okay, so what I've got to do here, I've got to change the size of my disc, don't I? So now it's pretty handy that I've named everything. So now if I if I click on this plus sign, see, I can now see the sketch that that, that, that disc was created from. So if I double click on that sketch there, uh, it takes me back into here. So instead of a 35 millimeter, what if I want a 30, let's see, how small can I go? I can go as small as 30. Let's try 30. Okay. Now, let's see what that does. Well, that sort of mucked things up a little bit. That's okay. I, I like the rim still good. I've got to change these holes here, don't I? Um, in fact, I've got to change my rim as well. Let's fix the holes first. So where were my holes? My holes were, there's my spoke holes. So if I open that up and click on the sketch for the spoke holes. Um, then what I can do, I want to bring these, I'm going to change that instead of 9.5 millimeters, I'm going to change them maybe, what if I go to 8.5, what's it going to look like? That's not bad, you know. Um, you know what, I'm just going to change this as well. So instead of making them 9 millimeter holes, I'll make them 8.5 millimeter holes. And I think that's pretty good actually. So now if I finish sketch, and you can see it automatically just fixes everything up for me. How cool is that, eh? All right. Another thing I'm going to do, um, if I look at the rules here, it says that for the rear wheels, it says rear wheel, uh, wheel, sorry, I'll get that right. It says wheel rear at surface contact point. In other words, the width of the rear wheel rim has to be between 15 and 18 millimeters. So at the moment... Um, this is not 15 or 18 millimeters. We want to make this bigger. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to, let's see, the rim. Now I don't need to edit the sketch. The sketch for the rim was okay. It was the actual extrusion that was wrong or that I need to change. So if I double click on the extrusion here where it says rim, double click on that. Instead of having a one millimeter extrusion, 
I'm going to have a, oh, I don't know what happened before. I'm going to have a, um, what have we got to do? 15, let's go 15 millimeter. So, oh, actually I don't even need 15, do I? Because that there is two millimeters. Actually, it's not two millimeters because remember we, we put the little chamfer on the edge. Um, so let's, let's make this, I think say that's 14 like that. Okay. So 14, so this whole distance here will be slightly less than 14 plus two. It'll be slightly less than 16. Let's measure it to check. I measure there between there and there and it's 15.6. Yeah, so remember it's not, it's not 16 that you might think it'd be because we've got, we've got a two millimeter thick disc and a two and a 14 millimeter rim. Um, that would be 16, but remember we put that chamfer on the edge there. So because of that chamfer, it's a little bit less. That's why it wasn't what we expect it to be. All right, okay. So now I've got a rear wheel that uh, matches the requirements uh, of the rules. So I'm going to save that. Now, how to 3D print these? Um, for both of these wheels, the front and the back, if you want to 3D print, you can't 3D print an IPT file. What you do is you go File, Export in a CAD format, and we're going to export to an STL file. So that STL file is the sort of file that you need to put in your slicer uh, application uh, to then be able to 3D print. Okay, so save there. And you should do the same with your front. Let's just quickly do that with the front. There's our front wheel. So I'm gonna go file, uh, export, CAD format. I'm gonna export that as an STL file as well. Save. So now I've got uh, those STL files, which I can take to my slicer, slice them and send them to my 3D printer. All right, that is the end of that particular tutorial.